So I just come home and just got out of the shower and I went and got myself a good clean shave. Welcome back once again, folks. Mighty fun to see you all here again. I just love meeting up here with you guys as frequently as we do and doing the shit we do together. Making history. Do you know... This video is about the intonation, tips on intonating. I thought about it when I was working on this uh, Squire guitar here, and I uh, thought, yeah, I'll make a video, a video about that. There's a whole lot more to intonating a guitar than just getting the sharps and flats right, or removed, or corrected, whatever. There's a lot more to it, <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about that today. So come on over closer, let's get right into it. Uh, well, first, let me tell you, when you intonate a guitar, okay, you, want, you need to intonate it according to how the guitar is going to be played, okay? If that guitar is going to be used to uh, hit chords and let the chords ring out in a long time, say like a slow song maybe, and you're going to hit the chords and let them ring out over a long period of time, then you don't want it to intonate when the string is initially plucked. Because it's going to be sharp every time. And the harder you hit it, the sharper it's going to go. So if you want it to ring out over a long chord, over an extended period of time, you want it to intonate on that long ring out, not the instant it's plucked. On the other hand, if you play solo a lot, or a banjo is good to use for this, let's use a banjo. Banjo players play a whole lot of notes very, very quickly. It passes fast, okay? A banjo doesn't even ring out very good. They're just made to pop and then it dies and it's gone. So you want a banjo to note, to intonate, right when the string is plucked, right then. Almost always, when you first hit a string, it'll read sharp on a good tuner and then it'll die down. As that string dies down and fades away, uh, the frequency will drop a little bit. Not very much. Some tuners don't even measure it, but it does drop. And the harder you hit the string, the sharper it's going to go, and the farther it's going to drop till it gets back down to where you want it at, or where it should be. So I'm going to bring a tuner over here. I've got the tuner already. Woo! I'm going to bring the camera. I'm going to bring you over here, and uh, where you can see the tuner, and show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. All right, I'm going to use this little Fender Tele here for this. Uh should be up to pitch if this the green light is in tune okay if this red light right here lights up it's sharp like it is now if the other red light over here lights up it's flat even one cent see that's ringing out flat so I'm going to tune it up There's exactly what I was talking about. Right when I pluck the string, it's sharp. And then as it dies, you can see the frequency fall down to the, the standard tuning. See, it was sharp just for a second. Well, now, see here, when I hit the string, it should go sharp. This light should come on. As it dies, it should drop down to the green light comes on. And there it did. every time but this is what I was talking about when you initially hit the string the elliptic pattern it vibrates in a round elliptic pattern okay and it pulls that string a little bit tighter as it does that and because it pulls it tighter it makes it sharper as the note dies down the string rings out the frequency drops and it goes in tune See? Let's try another string. See that red light coming on? Well, that time it didn't. There it did. You gotta wait for that tuner to catch up sometimes. See, it did it there. Let's try another string. 
I'm hitting the strings pretty hard too to make the point. But even if you hit them easy, see it's not nearly as bad. There, it, it still does it. Wait, let the tuner catch up. This one might be tuned low. Action is so low on this, it don't like to be hit very hard. Yeah, there you go, see? Now, if you're soloing a lot, you want the intonation to be dead on when you, right when you pluck the string, like that. Heavier gauge strings are even worse at this. It's in tune now. See there how it, it uh, intonates as it rings out? So if you're playing a lot of chords, you would want your guitar set up that way. However, if you were soloing, you wouldn't want to see this red light coming on. Banjo players don't want to see that. So you want to intonate it so. I'm just going to tune the string down here to make the point. See, when I hit the string now, it's intonated, and as it dies down, it goes flat. Very quickly, I might add. Wait till the tuner catches up. So if you were playing banjo, or, you know, one of these really shredding quick guys on the guitar or any instrument, you would want it to intonate just the very split second that that string was plucked. See, as it rings out, it gets flat. See that? That intonation right there would be set for a soloist. Now, if I wanted to intonate as it's dying, like this, and be sharp on the, uh, the second it's hit, if I played chords or slow stuff, I would, this is the intonation setting I would want. And there again, I'm just changing the tuning of the string to, to make this point. Hold on. So you see, it depends on how the instrument is going to be played. If you play solo and you're playing a whole bunch of real fast notes and squeezing them in, eighth notes or, or faster than that, you probably want the guitar or the instrument to intonate right when the string is hit and then as it dies down go flat because they're not going to hear that by the time it starts it's not going to have time to die down I mean you're just going to hit it and you know before it dies you're going to hit another note like chromatic or melodic players do or shredders do it too on guitars uh, but you know if you're playing like old slow country stuff or something you hit a chord and let it ring out for two three four bars you would want that guitar or that instrument to intonate not when it was plucked, but after that, you know, during the ring out process or whatever that you would call that. Uh, so you need to bear that in mind, folks. Keep it in mind when you're set, setting your intonation on a guitar. Uh, you know, keep that in mind. What's this instrument going to be used for? Is it a solo instrument? Is it a rhythm guitar only? Or, uh, you know, you could even meet that in between if you use them for both, which is what I do to a lot of mine. But I hope that helps you understand intonating a little bit better when you intonate your guitars, or uh, especially if you intonate someone else's. I hope that uh, sheds a new light on, on it for you. Thanks for watching. Cheers. I'll see you again soon. I don't know what we're going to fix next, but uh, I've got another Telecaster over there. I really want to get set up and fixed the way I like because I'm playing that guitar every day. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers. See you on the next one. Woo!